Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. The gratitude is very, very high, as well as these vibes, you guys. So let's go ahead and dive right into this week because that's obviously what we're gonna be talking about this afternoon. I do wanna say that this week seems to be pleasant enough. Next week is going to be tense. So with that, I would love for you guys to plan accordingly. And of course, I'm here all the time, every week, and I'll be able to guide you through these energies so that you know how to make them work for you and not against you, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right in. I've got the chart pulled up on my left. I've got a new mermaid tarot oracle in my right hand that I've already cut, blessed, and it's ready to go. I say new because I was working my full moon ritual. I think it was the full moon ritual. Um, not this recent moon, the one before that. And the sun, the rain, the wind, I left it outside and it got completely destroyed. But that is totally okay with me because I'm thinking about using that deck to create um, an intention, an intention vision board, which I think would be really awesome. I love to use a tarot in order to manifest my intentions, as you guys already know, as well as my candles from my apothecary. But all that to say that I did get a new tarot deck and it is the Mermaid Tarot. You guys have seen it before, but it, this is a fresh one, so that's pretty dope. How is your tarot deck holding up or your tarot decks and your oracle decks? You guys have to let me know down below. All right, so as I was saying, this week seems to be pleasant enough. Please keep in mind, we do have, I think, five major planets that are retrograde right now. We have Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, and Chiron. So Chiron isn't a major planet. It's a uh, meteor, but it still impacts us here on Earth in a way that is, you know, creates magnitude in our lives. So one thing too, okay, the one major thing that's standing out to me outside of the retrograde planet is the fact that Uranus and Saturn are still square each other. And what this is doing along with the retrogrades is it is creating a full on breakdown. I, I mean, you guys know I feel like a broken record when I say this because I keep repeating the same stuff, but this, these type of energies, they don't just disappear overnight or in one year. They, they drag, they linger on, and they when we have retrogrades, those planets, all the damage that they've done, they retrace their steps, they re- you know, arrange some things, sort through some things, then when they move direct, they start bull, bulldozing again. So there's this massive renovation that is happening in our world, in our planet, in our personal lives, in our relationships, in our health, all of it. Now where these planets are going to be showcasing the most of their renovations, it totally depends on your house or it totally depends on your astrology chart and the house that they're currently transiting. So for that reason, you're going to want to check your natal chart. You're going to need your time of birth. You're going to need your date of birth and you're also going to need your location, your birth location, in order to get the most accurate reading on that. At this time, I'm not offering any readings at this moment. However, um, there are some people kind of spamming and scamming down in the comments, so keep an eye out for that. But this is also something that you can do for yourself. And I would love to showcase a video in the coming week or so breaking down the houses, the astrology houses for you guys, of course. So back to what I was saying, you know, we have this massive renovation that's happening here and with Chiron also moving through Aries, remember I was telling you guys to keep your eyes on that because this is energy that really wants you to be confident, self-assured, it wants you to stand up for yourself, it wants you to speak up, speak out, it wants you to be a leader and an advocate for yourself. It doesn't want you to stay in the same space, in a space of powerlessness, but it also doesn't want you to be disrespectful of yourself or other people or the planet or the world or the energies around you by trying to bulldoze your own way and trying to force your own way and your own will. So there's this fine line that we have to straddle where we're respecting our, our personal power, our personal voice, what we want for ourselves, as well as what others want for themselves. And sometimes what ends up happening with this is that you kind of have to break apart and deviate so that each of those individual things can find themselves, develop themselves, sort themselves out. You know, that old saying that says, if you love it, let it go. If it's meant to be yours, it will come back and find you. Something similar along those lines. That's really what it is that we're having here, you guys. And this is not just 
relationships or people. These are aspects within ourselves, aspects within our world, within ideas and things that we would love to explore, things that we would love to invest ourselves in. And I say invest because we also have Saturn here. Saturn has been stealing the show as well as Pluto has been stealing the show for the last few years because they have really been doing a, a number. They've been doing a number in our, our politics and our government, but in our personal lives, this is where we see the things that we are trying so hard to establish and build for ourselves. This could be our career. This could be relationships and marriage. This is a time of divorce and separation. You guys know that I was talking to you guys about that, of course. But when I started this video and I said how pleasant these energies are and how ple pleasant this energy of this week is, my loves, despite the craziness that is happening in the planets currently in the cosmos, there is so much inventory invitation here there's so much of an offer from the universe from the planets to to play to play and to embrace the moment as much as you can with a sigh that's what i'm getting is this energetic big deep breath and big exhale big inhale big exhale it's kind of reminding me of the message that I said about four or five years ago where I said, listen, you guys, buckle up. Things are going to get really intense really quickly. And what you don't want to do is hold on to your old status quo. It's you want to learn to become more flexible and movable in these current situations or else you're going to you're going to experience unnecessary pain and suffering. Now, as a human being, the pain and suffering is always going to be there, but we are being taught every single one of us are being taught that everything is temporary this moment is a blessing and the more that we can allow ourselves to just kind of let it go and let it flow through our fingertips the more something else is going to flow right in and we are just so grateful for each and every single one of those moments this energy reminds me so much of yoga and gentle movement so with yoga you you are guided to focus on the breath why? Because the breath is so natural and it helps you to shift your perspective. It helps to shift your current, you know, perception of what is happening in your physical, mental, emotional bodies so that you can continue to ground and center yourself regardless of the tension and the pressure that might be, you know, p pushing down on you in your external environment, right? And also your internal environment. And the more that you practice, the more that you show up, the more that you make this your new routine, regardless of what's happening in the world, whether you have these highs or these lows, the more that you show up, the more that you will benefit from this practice of calming yourself, centering yourself, and bringing everything back into your own personal alignment with the universe, with the divine. That's what spirit wants for you. Over time, it starts to become more comfortable. And over time, we don't rush through this. We don't force through this we start to acknowledge and recognize how far we've come, the growth that we've, that we've achieved for ourselves, this accomplishment that we feel, this sense of success and personal reward at how through gentle stretches and through gentle movement and through gentle adjustment, you have actually gone so far and have attained so much and get closer and closer to your goal every single day. With these planets, that's exactly the energy that we're experiencing right now. We have the sun moving through the sign of Leo and Leo is all about expression. It's all about, you know, moving, like feeling, feeling your heart, feeling your gut, feeling your self-worth, your self-value, knowing that it's substantial, knowing that it's significant, knowing that it's important, vibrant and bright. And then wanting to and being open to sharing that with the world or with other people who see your light, respect your light, appreciate your light and add value and add, you know, their own light. So the light and the, this, you know, this energy gets brighter. I don't know about you guys, but the connections lately have been absolutely phenomenal. There's people of all different backgrounds coming together right now through social media, through their communities, through just interesting connections just weaving themselves into alignment with the with with um with themselves and you know we're creating this massive beautiful web of light giving and receiving energies it's that's really what it's all about okay at the center of this deck we have we have the eight of cups and the king of wands something about this is spirit's way of telling 
us, giving us acknowledgement that the journey itself is not always the easiest thing. There's this acknowledgement that sometimes taking these steps forward can be tough. But Spirit is saying, listen, it's always worth it. On the 25th, Mercury is going to be directly opposite of Pluto. And this is where we have and Mercury currently moving through Cancer right now needs a lot of support, um, needs a lot of nurturing, it needs a lot of uh, tenderness and care. But on the 27th, Mercury will move out of Leo and that will become a little bit more playful but at the start of this week we really want to be gentle and kind and nurturing and supportive with our words what we're saying to people that's going to be ultimately healing that's going to give us a lot of life we have the star card here and the ace of wands so something really is going to start sparking up in the cosmos inspired by the cosmos that you're going to feel down here on earth that's going to make you feel very passionate very engaged just i am definitely seeing a new project some of you guys are saying yes to a massive creative project i'm also getting the vibes of co-creating and co-collaborating which is absolutely awesome i also saw that energy for my own self in my personal life this weekend which was so great and such a vibe um, when mercury moves into the sign of leo this is when communication starts to really engage um i just heard hydro hydro fuel which is so interesting because it's just like those gears start to work they start to move and you know do their thing and this is again what i'm saying if you are open to it if you're open to connecting you guys if you're open to reconnecting rekindling you can really make some interesting awesome connections from people who are completely opposite from you but energetically you might have a lot in common or energetically you might have a lot to gain from each other by this co-creating exchange that's happening here especially as jupiter enters back into the sign of pisces moving from back and forth from Aquarius to Pisces. This is high vibrational energy. This is high, higher purpose, higher value. In This is what happens when we have Aquarius and Pisces working together, those energies. And with Jupiter bouncing back and forth, there is something that is really monumental that can be built here. From the rubble is what it is that I'm hearing, from the rubble of what was kind of taken down and what was destroyed, it feels like what you said goodbye to or what you had to exit out of opens the door and sets the stage. That's what I'm hearing, sets the stage for this new chapter in your life. I'm surprised that we haven't seen the full card here because this feels very fresh energy, but maybe it'll show up. The next thing that I'm seeing is that Mars enters into the sign of Scorpio. This is going to be on the 29th. I'm sorry, not Scorpio. Mars is going to be entering the sign of Virgo. This is when we take those projects, those um, those creative endeavors that I was talking to you guys about, and we start to fine-tune them, we start to detail them, and we start to make this more into a practical, like take a more practical approach and turn it into a more specific reality if that makes any sense so we take this wow you have this great idea this is what i'm thinking this is what i'm feeling this is what i've done before this is what i've created i love how you did this i love how you did this you know forgive me for for throwing this idea out there but like what if you and then do you see how that collaboration starts to come with people kind of so things that were once locked up you guys please hear me with this with the hanged man here and the two of swords reversed things that were once locked up they really start to free and open themselves up why because we're not stuck we're not stagnant we're not holding on to the old status quo we're so open to these temporary fixes these temporary moments these these situations that are really miracles and blessings and gifts from the universe that we're just like wow this is so awesome that we're here we're ready we're present and we're doing this if you're down i'm down that's the kind of vibe that that i'm seeing here on august 1st uh sun is going to be sitting directly conjunct mercury um, Mercury is going to be meeting up with the sun, okay? So this is when we're really taking, this is a brilliant co-collaboration day. This is a brilliant day for news information. Um, you guys, this does not always work. I, I always say relationships can be broken down into all different types of, like everything is a relationship. So if I'm talking about people collaborating, it doesn't necessarily have to be work. It could be intimate. It could be romantic. It could be friendship. It could be siblings, family, or the relationship you have with yourself or the divine. Please take it how it resonates. Again, because this is how the planets are moving through your personal, how they're moving in general, but apply it to your personal chart. Um, but the, the first is an awesome time 
to co collaborate with each other with Mercury sitting directly opposite and with the Sun directly opposite Saturn these plans can really be cemented, especially if you are open to considering the perspective, the different opinions, the different backgrounds, the different cultures of people who are unlike yourself. Aquarius energy right now, my loves, is not about finding like-minded. It's about finding um, or being divinely guided to people who are very different from you, who are have a lot to contribute in their own perspective their own visions and if you take the time to sit out you will find a common ground and benefit a lot so you guys i keep seeing the emperor and the empress lately today so there's a lot that wants to emerge is what it is that i'm seeing and feeling here let me just kind of lower my chair see if i can do that see what happens i tried to assemble this chair myself i did a good job it just went down Pats on the back for Patrick. You guys know where that's from? Spongebob. All right, so center of the reading, we have seven of pentacles, eight of wands reversed, and the judgment card. So again, right away, I'm getting this sense of rebirth, renewal, re-emergence, awakening. And I'm hearing you have the advantage here. You have the advantage. If you want it, you can have it. Okay, seven of pentacles says either you are observing the path or you are observing, I do not feel like this is an individual type of energy, you are observing with another the path of what you can create here. And I feel like you guys are kind of, what with the Eight of Wands here, it feels like you're minimizing distraction, you're mis minimizing poisonous disappointment. What I feel and what I sense from that is that you're acknowledging the fact that the things that you've had to say goodbye to or the things that no longer serve you, the things that don't quench your thirst anymore, don't feed your appetite, you're realizing that they were poisonous anyways and to continue to eat it wouldn't be beneficial, wouldn't feel good to you. So the fact that you're able to explore your options and to clear out the fog and clear out the cloudiness so that you can get your head right, so you can get your mind right, that's when things start to move forward. There's something that keeps coming through. I'm hearing it again. You guys have heard me say this word before, disorder. And I'm also hearing disordered thinking, disordered perspective disordered way of dot 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 so fill in the blanks there it's spirit is really trying to clear out this is a global phenomenon is what i'm hearing right now it's a global phenomenon of clearing out disordered thinking disordered perspective dis disordered um vision as i'm looking at that my first thought with thinking and disorder is looking at gemini energy um north node is here the vertex is here the part of fortune is here in the sign of Gemini and we have a lot of planets here we have the moon we have Venus we have Mars we have the Sun and we have Mercury we have Saturn retrograde all of these planets are aspecting the North Node this is where we're headed where we need to go and where we're being guided for good, for what feels like it's good or bad, it is what it is. We have the vertex point, the point of faded encounters, and we also have the wheel of fortune, our best luck, our highest luck, in the sign of Gemini. Gemini rules our communication. It rules how we think, how we process information, or how we gain information, right? Where we accumulate that information and then begin to process it. Um, and start to interact with it. We start to get curious. If there is a disorder there, any information that is that you're receiving will start to fizzle out or be mistranslated, okay, lost in translation. And spirit, I feel, is trying to clear out disordered thinking or dysfunctional thinking or dis dysfunctional perspective so that you can see, clear, and process more efficiently, more productively, and more con like positive, more on a, something that, on a, a wavelength, the frequency that's more conducive is what I'm hearing. I'm also getting this connection between the element of copper, copper and different, and like, copper which sends it's like a receptive a receiver it sends these freak this energy back and forth this frequency back and forth so i'm also getting a connection to crystals here working with crystals and i'm also hearing the crystal grid um and, and how as above so below so what connects us to the planets is what grounds us here on earth and also you want to um, mirror that energy into your physical body, into your spiritual and your emotional body. So you want to ground yourself, connect yourself, center yourself, make sure those chakras are aligned. I'm seeing you working with crystals, doing energy work, Reiki work, and I'm also seeing you guys clearing um, 
uh, dysfunction, chaos out of the mind, out of the head. We want the mind free of stress. We want the mind free of um, imbalance, right? This is also something that I've seen with the emperor here and the empress. We want to balance out those energies, what we're doing, what we're receiving, okay? We want to make sure that they're equal here. We also have three of wands. We have three of pentacles. So again, this is the energy of collaboration, okay? And we also have eight of pentacles here. Um, reverse. We have seven of swords and page of swords. I'm really being called and guided to tell you guys that don't be afraid to deviate from your normal path and don't be afraid to speak up again, assert yourself and say, listen, this is what I would love to see happen. This is what I would love to create. This is where I would love, who I would love to collaborate with. Are you interested? Are you down? And don't take no as a bad thing. You know, I feel like it could be, you know, when they say that every no could be cosmic redirection or it's just the divine kind of rerouting you. I don't necessarily see it as that. I just feel like no just is means not right now with this situation. There's a really strong chance that once you start to build and collaborate on this end, you will start to see more progress. One thing I wanted to do really quickly, and I know we're going really fast with our, I just heard receptive again. I know that we're moving really quickly through this reading. High vibe though, high vibe. I would love to hear, darn, I hate it when that happens. My cards go flying across the room. They did that during Sacred Circle and I couldn't find the cards. I'll be right back. And we're back. So like I was saying, I, I was hearing the word receptive and receiver. I'm really curious to hear what crystals you guys are vibing with right now. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys are vibing with the same crystal because I feel like this is going to help a lot of people co-create and co-collab. Do you remember how I was talking about the crystal grid earlier in this reading? I feel like each one of us, if we're working with specific crystals, whatever it is that you're being called and guided to, you're actually going to, I, I'm, I'm hearing remotely connect to a like-minded person. And if you guys were to track your, this, this is not something I want to post on the internet because the way that the world is today, you guys know, um, the way that the world is today could be really dangerous. So don't do this, but I think you would be surprised who though you might connect with. You know, if you were able to connect the dots. We do that sometimes in the sacred circle. So if you guys would love to join my school, my tarot school, we talk esoteric symbolism. We talk a tarot on such a deep level. You'd be surprised how deep we go with that. Okay, fork in the road. Interesting. Ooh, this one wants to jump out. We have imagine. <clears throat> that card always reminds me of Ariana Grande. Imagine the world like that. Yeah, with the fork in the road, I'm really getting a sense that not everybody is going to be able to go where you're going, or at least not right now. It doesn't mean that they can't catch up later. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared to say goodbye, like a temporary, like, all right, well, we'll catch up. Leave it like that. Just as I said that, we have the orphan card. Some of you guys are really afraid of what you're going to have to let go of, what you're going to have to... I just heard you feel like you're tossing out in the trash. Or I feel like what was tossed in the trash starts to come back out. Not that it was trash, but maybe in a moment, a fit, a fury, an emotional, you know, space. You were in an emotional space and you tossed something out. This might be a message is coming through. I would not be surprised, especially with Mercury moving through Leo, Sun conjunct Mercury directly opposing Saturn. That pressure man can force out an entire message. That's why I'm feeling like next week what happens here. It's like we're co-creating, we're co-collaborating this week, and then next week, it's balls to the wall. Okay, now that we talked about this, what are we doing? Now that we're here, what are you going to do? It starts, the energy really starts to shift, and there seems to be a bit more pressure here. Between two worlds. So have some space and some grace and some forgiveness for yourself with what you are allowing yourself to do, what you are, where you are allowing yourself to be called to and drawn to, that's all about the creative flow, the creative process. We don't want to be so rigid and set in our ways, right? We're balancing out our emperor and our empress energy. One more card, and then we're going to, okay, two more cards. Spirit says, nice try. Look at this, my loves. We have loyal heart and the fates. This is faded information, faded people, faded encounters. It's bringing me right back to the North Node, the Vertex, and the Part of Fortune. All of them 
falling in the sign of Gemini. Now, Gemini isn't always the most notoriously loyal sign. It's okay, but they do have a good heart. They do have good energy. And Gemini, of course, they rules the lover's card. So I am seeing a lot of connections. But again, for those of you guys that are single, mingling, or wanting to, again, you know, collab on this beautiful project that is nice seeing that's you know being built here you got to put yourself out there the root of this card is the yang card or the root of this reading we have the yang card Let's see if it'll focus maybe not oh no fine trust me it's yang okay you guys definitely want to put yourself out there okay because if you shine your light you'd be so surprised who what you will attract and what you guys are going to co-create together I love you guys so much. It is such a blessing to be able to be here again with you guys and shuffle these cards and pull these charts. If you would like to download my Astro ebook guide to 2021, I'm going to link it down below in the comments. But also, August 1st, which is right around the corner, I'm going to start writing the 2022 guide with, um, well, featuring astrology and tarot, just like I did last year for 2022. Does that make sense? Um, <laughs> only this time because it was so highly requested and because the reviews of this book and the guide of this book were so helpful to so many of you guys, you wanted to get it published in an actual physical form. And I'm going to take way more time this time, again, starting in August, so that this book to me is going to be like absolutely spotless and pristine, okay? I'm shutting everything down so I can fo focus on this for the most part. So keep your eyes out for that project. <laughs> Speaking of co-collaborating, co right? And co-creating. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, again, it's going to take me a few months to write. I'm not going to rush through it. I want to take my time. Um, again, it'll be tarot and astrology. And for those of you guys that are very, very interested in taking your tarot experience to the next level or your tarot studies to the next level, you are more than welcome to check out the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which is a school that I've created, online school um, of students worldwide, internationally, who meet every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live and we dive into the esoteric symbolism and numerology and you know deeper meaning and also intuitive message of each of the cards. And we do really deep dives into our current environment, our current circumstances. It's more than just tarot, though, meaning tarot meanings and tarot study. Um, most of the students are saying that it's been life-changing, and I'm very, very proud of that. And we're going to continue to carry that forward into 2022. Until then, you guys, make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.